As we celebrate World Kindness Day, who better to join us than the Kindness Institute founder, Christina Cavett. Welcome back. Thank you. Always lovely to have you on the show, uh, particularly today. Now, for those at home who haven't heard of the Kindness Institute, can you give me a quick overview about what you do? Yeah, sure. We support marginalised youth to transform their own mental health. So we do that through a lot of kindness and mindfulness and resilience-based programs. Okay, lots of different things. Yeah. And now you're a member of the New Zealand Order of Merit as well for services to youth and community. Congratulations. Thank you. That is really exciting. Yeah, huge honour to be so young to receive it as well. It's amazing. Uh, well, I know, exactly. <laughs> so what next for you? Um, the Kindness Project, how has it developed over the last year? Well, we've been so lucky that now we've had these evaluations of our young people who've been in the program for quite a while. So a year later, we're seeing results like 100% of our young people reporting that they're better able to manage challenges in their lives, that they're teaching mindfulness and resilience skills to their communities, and that they're still practicing these tools without us. And for us, that's like, the gold standard, you know, that's what we want is for young people to be able to practice and share mm. these tools without directly being in our program. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? If It's all very well and good doing these things when you are in a program because it is mm. easy to follow along, but once they've left, that's the real sort of... Uh, standing isn't it if they can continue doing it and want to continue doing it yeah absolutely i mean it's hard enough for me and a lot of adults to commit to a practice so the fact that these teenagers are giving up their saturday and sunday mornings to practice mm. mindfulness is huge and 100 percent too i mean that's yeah pretty what has 100 percent these days <laughs> Nothing on Rotten Tomatoes, that's for sure. That's incredible. <laughs> so what are your plans with the team of Empowered Rangatahi going forward in spreading kindness into the communities? Well, our Rangatahi now, our alumni, are becoming our youth mentors. So we're training them and they'll be teaching young people because who better to deliver these programs yeah. than young people who've experienced the transformation themselves. So it's super exciting. But I guess our main focus is... You know, we really need to invest as a country into evidence-based programs that are working, that are changing and transforming our young people's mental health. So that's our goal, is to be able to make these programs available to all young people throughout the country. So tell us a little bit about the petition that you and your team have submitted to the government. Yeah, so we did a petition to fund mental skills training programs for all young people in Aotearoa, and a lot of New Zealanders agreed with us. We had over 14,000 people sign the petition for government to fund and invest in our programs. Why do you think it's important, and what will it change? Well, it's important for New Zealanders to speak up about what they want. You know, everyone recognises that we're failing our young people, mm. unfortunately, and we need to reach them, and the best way to do that is through our education system. So I'm hoping, you know, we have a Prime Minister now who does prioritise kindness. So we're really hoping that there is going to be a big change. Mm. Because obviously if you can teach these skills to everybody, it's going to start a, stop a lot of problems further down the track for these young people, isn't it? Absolutely. It has a ripple effect and that's what we're trying to do through training the trainer, through our young people sharing these tools, is that it impacts communities by one young person participating. Mm. An entire community can positively benefit. So what yeah. can we do to help? Oh, well, you can donate, Mel, <laughs> or you can sign the petition. It's still live on our website. Excellent. Yeah, we love that. And just very quickly, if there are people watching at home who want to start practising a bit of mindfulness, what's one quick tip that they can do right now? Well, I think for World Kindness Day, it's really important to recognise that we spend a lot of time supporting others and being kind to others. But on this day, why not give yourself permission to take a break? And to do that, you know, you might notice when the mind wanders, when we make mistakes, we tend to self-criticise and mm. beat ourselves up. But instead of doing that today, why not take a mindful pause? Just take a few nice, full, deep breaths, and you might notice you go down a very different path today. That's excellent. It's always an absolute pleasure to chat with you, Christina. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Now, for more on Christina and the Kindness Institute, you can head to the website on screen, and make sure you go and sign the petition as well.